I've been doing art my whole life. Uh, my whole family is in the arts in some way or another. My mother is a painter and my grandmother was an architect and my grandfather was a painter and a writer and my sister does art. My dad is a weirdo. They're all in the arts. Uh, I wanted to work at Taco Bell, but my parents said, no, you have to go to college. And it seemed like all I knew how to do was draw. That was the only thing I had any aptitude for or interest was art. And so it just made sense to go right into the arts. And meow. Thank you. It's a mysterious game. And it's very satisfying when you hit the ball where you're trying to get it to go. The beauty of pinball is also that you always lose at the end. Uh, in some games, most games, the object is to beat the game or the opponent or whatever, and at some point you might win. You never win at pinball. You can have a great game, you can hit lots of shots and get jackpots or multi-balls or lots of cool features, but you never win. Eventually the ball goes down the center or down one of the out lanes and you're done. And uh, you always lose a pinball. And that's kind of beautiful because life is often a series of failures with some high points. So it fits with my philosophy of accepting failure as a constant element of life. Guys, look! <gasps> Banjo's back! Sorry, sorry, Banjo. So I went to SBA, the School of Visual Arts, uh, to learn how to draw, paint, make money doing something that's not real work somehow. Afterwards, it was a little tricky and I couldn't really get into illustration. I would email people, but I wasn't that good yet. And I didn't really have a portfolio. And this is just how it goes when you're doing art after college. Your college work is never very good, really, unless you're a genius. So I kind of floundered and did different projects and took different jobs. And then I kind of needed to figure things out. And so I just started going to this website called Threadless. Threadless is this website where people submit t-shirt designs and then people vote on them. And the ones with the high scores get made into actual t-shirts. And then if you're the artist behind that shirt, you get paid a bunch of money. But that didn't happen for me, even though I submitted like 25 shirts, I would just argue with people. They'd be like, oh, can't you make this a little better? Or this could be better this way, or you should redesign this and just say go to hell and tell them that they were not, that I was not gonna do those things and uh, that this website was dumb. And then they ended up making a shirt for me anyway. That was really good and kind of where things got started for me again. And I started submitting t-shirts to other companies. I got involved with Mishka, a brand I'm very that's very dear to me. Mishka is this company founded by guys who like comic books and punk rock and you know, youth stuff and were just obsessive collectors and liked weird subcultures and uh, they hired me to do stuff from very early on and I've been part of their little family for a while. That's been pretty great. <laughs> this guy behind you is smiling. I don't know what that means. <laughs> That's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> The working schedule for a freelancer in New York, uh, there's not a lot of free time, but I guess there are things I like to do. I collect comic books and books. Um, I'm a pinball enthusiast. I really love pinball. I go to this uh, laundromat near here a lot to play pinball, either to calm down or to reward myself or if I'm having a bad day or a good day. Well, the laundromat is really uh, not terribly noticeable at first. It's just a door and then you see uh, certain laundry machines and it's easy to walk by. But once you go inside, there's about 16 to 20 of the best pinball machines ever made, all kept in perfect working order by the proprietor of the laundromat, whose interest is mainly pinball and less laundry machines. As a lot of things in New York become more similar to places outside of New York, like once upon a time you go to St. Mark's, you see all these weird bookstores and punk stores, and now it's just eight Japanese restaurants. I like Japanese food a lot, but it's not necessarily special to St. Mark's or New York. So as New York becomes more of a place where the special things have been removed, the Brooklyn Banks is gone, the Forbes Gallery used to have all these uh, Fabergé eggs, and you can go see them for free, and those have got taken back to Russia. And so when you find special spots in New York, you want to kind of hold on to them and hang out them as much as you can before they get washed away and turned into, a, into another 7-Eleven or Dwayne Reed, or you know, as, as the city becomes more like a strip mall, these special spots become rarer. In New York, uh, many people are poor and starving and they su support their need for food by fishing in the very toxic river. Unfortunately, the fish are also mutated and toxic 
being that this is the East River, a notoriously polluted and horrible place. And so the polluted fish turn the people into mutant people, which is why New York is famous for CHUDs, which stands for Cannibalistic Humanoid Underground Dwellers. And uh, in New York, if you come here, just be careful when you go to the sewers, like if you're around the sewer, the manholes or the little things on the edge of the curbs, the sewer grates, just be careful, Take a, give them a wide berth because you'll see little human like arms. And a I tend to work in watercolor. It's very different from everything else, but it's a very weird high risk art form because if you screw up that you can't paint over things because it's all see through. So watercolor is great and that's my favorite thing. Uh, and then secondarily ink on paper because that's what people need for silk screened t-shirts, posters, band merch, and I do a lot of that. That's all very comic booky influenced and influenced by graphics for mass-produced products that I like. And then what else is there? I like writing. I write for Vice, I write comic book reviews and interviews and stuff like that. I write about art and culture. When I was 18, I, I interned at Vice and I was a real loser and I had nothing to offer. I think I got on a lot of people's nerves. And then I just kind of went away. I, uh, that didn't really go anywhere. And then a friend of mine named Thomas, who they ended up making a doll out of, got me back involved when he started working for Vice, which is now my main job with them. I work as the art editor. I'm very fond of America, but at the same time, a lot of emphasis is placed on winning all the time, being number one, being the biggest, being the best. And uh, the thing is that no one gets to be number one or be the best or the biggest all the time. And learning how to deal with the parts of life when you're not the biggest or the best or number one or whatever is really important and healthy because otherwise then what, you know, you'll think you're garbage for most of your life. And so it's kind of cool how you have this little journey, you get the, hit the ball through the machine, and at the end you lose. Um, you can never beat a pinball machine. I'm the gazing. And so are you. <laughs>